What's up, everyone? Welcome to math class with Magneto. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I wanted to get like school glasses, but I I lost all my 3D glasses that I'd poke the the frames out of, and that's how I'd make my kind of like nerd looking glasses. So anyway, so today we're going over your breakdance beginners checklist move list thing. Okay, so basically I'm gonna go through every single genre of breaking and we're gonna go through every single move I think personally my own opinion that is biased that you guys should all have okay let's see how many you got okay first up top rock so first off at the bottom over here we have your two-step front then we have your two-step back then we have your side step and your crossover step so these are the four basics I believe that you should have and every beginner should know and understand and these are the four basics that are going to help you to get to a more intermediate level that everyone as i said should have next one next up we have your go downs how to connect your top rock to floor work footwork freezes power moves anything you got to understand your go downs so let's go through the list all right for your go downs we have your knee drop starting off number one then we have your corkscrew your spinning knee drop Po one sweep, because you gotta give shout outs to Po. Then you've got your um, back slide, because you need to understand how to get from standing up to your back in the beginners too. You don't wanna just have all your go downs being like knee drops and ways to get the footwork. It's good to understand how to get all the way down as well. Then, ending it off, we've got your back two step, which is one of my favorites. It's just a very simple and easy way to connect top rock into your footwork. Next one. All right, next one, let's go to your footwork. Another essential of breaking. So let's walk through the list. Okay, starting off at the beginning, we've got your one to six step. This is one step or coffee grinders. This is two step or baby swipes. This is three step. This is four step, five step, and six step. It's very important that you have all of these understood, okay? Then we get to more advanced ones later, but these are your base, base footworks that everyone should get when you're a beginner, in my opinion, as of course because we know that it's all just my opinion. Next up, we have your CCs or Crazy Commandos, one of my favorite footwork steps, hands down. Then moving right along, we've got your kickouts. Kickouts are very important to have, and everyone, I believe, should have them. They're an essential in footwork. Next up, we've got your Zulu spins. Again, another base, taking your CCs and then rotating over and over and over. Great way to stand up and or just travel around the floor. Next up, we have your monkey sweeps. This really elevates your sweep game and gets you to not just do coffee runners and one steps, but gets you to understand how to do sweeps both directions and both sides. And next up, we have your eight step or your blenders or your around the worlds or your 12 step, many different names for it. This is just mine. Um, again, I think a very important one to teach you how to stay facing the ground the whole time and how to use your hips and footwork. Next up, we have your shuffles. Again, one of my favorites. You can travel across the floor. You can go side to side. You can do it as literally many different ways to do it. So after that, we've got your Russians, Russian kicks. Um, again, a very important one because it teaches you how to do footwork without your hands and builds your strength in your ankles, your thighs, your legs all together. All right, from footwork, we're going lower and lower. We've got floor work. This is everything on the ground. So on your bum, on your back, on your shoulders, on your hips, etc. First one, we've got your bum spins. Now I know bum spins feel like a kindergarten, beginner, basic move, and we're all too good for it. But there's lots of uses for bum spins and it also is the start for you to learn how to spin and start tracking your spins and your balance and your control and your power while rotating in the most like safe environment that you can because you're on the ground on your bum. It also teaches you how to spot like how ballerinas do but with breaking. Second one, we have your bum size. This is one that I learned from Thesis a long time ago. And again, it feels like it's too basic and too beginner to be used, but there's lots of uses for it and I find it being a very actual useful thing to have, as well as it just being a great way to slide across the floor and get places. Next one, we have your mountain slides. This is again, a very good beginner basic one that I use a lot and I think is very useful. Then from there, we have your stomach coffee grinders. Again, one of my favorites. I really like this one. Learning how to go from your stomach to your side of your hip to your bum is very important. Then next up, we have your back rocks as well. Back rocks, I think, are a very great one to learn how to get from your back, again, into shoulder freeze, into your top rock, into whatever you want. And I'm actually gonna add two more, so one second. Okay, so there's a lot of moves in breaking. I'm doing my best to Keep track of them all, but if I miss a couple, by all means, comment down below, rage me out for not knowing every single move. Okay, so we've got your back windmills, okay? 
This one's very important, I believe, because this teaches you your base for backspins, this teaches you your base for windmills, it teaches you just simply how to get from your bum to your shoulders to your back. I think it's a very important one that everyone should understand, as well as your stomach rolls. Stomach rolls are really important because, again, they teach you how to go from your bum to the side of your hip to your stomach, back up in a rolling motion, like a, like a barrel roll. So these are, again, good basics that I believe every beginner should have. Okay, next up we have threading. As many of you know, one of my favorites, and I think it's important for us to go over threading and floor work too much, going over the four basic elements that everyone knows because I believe beginners should have a good understanding of this too because style is part of breaking, and I believe floor work and threading is a huge part of breaking too, and I think it should be taught as a base foundation in my opinion. So I am. <laughs> All right, your threading foundation is a little bit bigger as you can see than some of the other ones. And that's because for me, I've built it a bit bigger. So that's just how I do it. And also there's a lot of very beginner threads that we can do that is very easy to do that I think will help a lot of people. All right, starting at the bottom, infinity thread. This is the first thread that I teach because you're on your back, you're in the most comfortable position you can be. You're a dead bug, legs in the air, hands in the air, and it's very easy to just continue threading from there. I think it's a good, a good base point to start. Then from there, we have your bicycle thread. You wanna learn how to thread standing up too. This, these are not just all floor work threads, okay? Then from there, we have your James Brown thread. It's good to understand this one. This one teaches you how to go from a front position to a side position, one of the basics. Then from there, we have your barrel roll thread. You wanna start learning how to thread and roll at the same time. This teaches you that. Then from there, you've got your two-step thread. Two-step thread is a good one to understand because it starts teaching you how to do jump threads and threads like that. It's good to understand how to step through your foot. Then from there, we have your figure four thread. This is the base before James Brown thread that you should learn. Another one of the very beginner ones. Then from there, we have your knee threads. You want to understand how to thread with all parts of your body, and this teaches you that. Then from there, we have your bum spin thread. You want to start learning how to spin and rotate while threading as well. Now, we could go into arm threads. We could go into footwork threads, like six-step threads and all that stuff as well. But for the purpose of time, actually, we'll do six-step threads too, okay. Six step, oh my God, I cannot write this set. Step, I can't, I can't write like that. Oh, anyway, six step threads, let's put that in there too, okay? Six step thread I think is a very good one that you should understand as well. Um, but yeah, I could do this all day. I've got so many threads and my foundation for threading is quite large. So, but I, anything here I believe is what everyone should know for beginners. Okay, for now at least. All right, moving along, we've got your freezes. This one, we're gonna go in depth on this, so hold your horses here. So this one, again, I have a little bit more of an in-depth foundation on. So we've got your shoulder freezes, okay? You wanna have both sides, all right? But you also wanna have all your leg position changes. So that's straddle, wide legs, okay, legs straight in the air, cannonball position, knees to your chest, one leg in front or and or Nike, and Nike switched, okay? As well as learning how to go five fingers, four, three, two, one, and you can go only on one hand. Okay, so taking one hand fully off the ground. All right, next up, we've got your tabletop and or turtle freezes. So you wanna have your tabletop freezes, both sides, okay? And you wanna be able to go all the way from five fingers, four, three, two, one, until you're holding it only on one arm. Then you wanna have your turtle freezes, which is both elbows into your stomach, balanced as well. Next up, we have your baby freezes. You wanna, again, have your baby freezes, both sides, so that's left and right. And understanding how to go from traditional baby freeze to switch baby freeze. All right, next up, we've got your chair freeze. You wanna have your chair freeze, both sides, okay? As well as understanding how to do your leg switches on both sides. Your leg switches is basically just switching one from one leg to the other leg in your chair. Next up, your headstands. You wanna have your headstand all four poses. Again, you, which is to straddle, your Nike, your Nike switch, your leg straight, and your cannonball freeze position. Next up, you wanna have your elbow freeze and our elbow stalls, okay? So again, for this one, you wanna have elbow freeze on both sides and you wanna have your center one. If you can, I'd recommend trying to do all four positions for your legs, but if, unless you wanna have a really solid elbow base, it's not necessarily super important. And next up, you have your teddy bear freeze. If you want, you can go to air babies as well, but I'm gonna kinda of leave that for more intermediate. Um, but you wanna at least have an understanding of your teddy bear freeze. Next up, we have your handstand. So again, for your handstand, you wanna have an understanding of how to do straddle, legs together, which is straight and or pencil. You wanna have Nike, both sides, and or just one leg in front, one leg behind. You don't necessarily have to have a handstand good enough to switch between all those in the same handstand, but you wanna get to go up and hold each one of those positions for at least three to five seconds. Lastly, your S chair or your shoulder chair, I think is an important foundation to have too, because then there's style heads like me who use it as like their foundation. So I think it's good for beginners to understand at least how to do it. All right, lastly, we have your power moves slash tricks. I put them in the same category because there's some tricks that people will be like, 
those are power moves. And then there's, there'll be some people that be like, those are tricks. So I'm just putting them in the same category so that you guys understand that some of them kind of have these crossovers on what the technicality is. But we're just gonna cross over a little bit because I believe for power, it's good to understand some of these tricks. And again, for some of these tricks, it's good to understand the power of it. So they kind of go back and forth. I'm gonna do two boards for this one because it's too many. Um, but starting off, we have your backspins. Again, an iconic b-board base power move. Everyone should have an understanding of it because it helps out in every category that you have. You've got to learn how to spin, bro. Next up, we've got your hand glides. That's learning how to just spin on one hand in your tabletop position, which is again why it's important for you to understand how to do just hold a one-handed a one-handed tabletop freeze because if you want beginner power moves, you need to have that. Next up, we have your no hop turtles. This is when you're rotating from one stab to the other stab in a circle without actually hopping. So once you get to hopping and turtles and stuff, and then that comes a little bit later, but you've got to understand the base first. From there, we have your tornadoes, that's spinning in a handstand in a circle. Next up, we've got your scissor kicks, that's two-handed hand hops where your legs are switching, boom, 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 just like this, okay? Well, after that, we have your hand spams. This is, again, kind of more of a trick category. That, that's one from one hand handstand to another hand handstand. I think it's very important for beginners to have this because it helps you learn how to balance and have your weight control in your handstands. All right, stab back taps. I think this is one that I don't see many people use, but I actually found it very helpful for me to learn back taps and to learn just other kind of, again, power moves. I say that because it's not a traditional power move. It's more new age, new generation. But I think it's a good transition to understand how to learn to go from your back with a tap, it also goes into head tracks and stuff like that. Next up, we have your two hand stab hops. So this is basically switching from stab to stab with a hop. I think this is again a very important precursor to learn like dark hammers and stuff like that later on. After that, we have your tuck flares. Again, an unconventional one, but I think if people started out learning tuck flares first, it would actually be helpful because it would teach you how to use your hips, which is again very important. And it's a kind of easy way to start learning how to do flares later on because you can just start bringing your legs wider and wider and wider and then eventually get flares. Then on the trick spectrum, some of the basic handstand one-handed freezes I think you should have is your Nike and your pencil and your cannonball and your star, which is just one-handed handstand. And that is all everybody. Again, this is a, just a very biased list. This is my, from my 12 years of experience and like seven years of teaching experience that I believe are the good kind of basis to start with and that we should kind of look at having as a beginner. Um, now, by all means, there's definitely people that could be like, oh, head spins and windmills and flares and all these things could be considered beginner power moves too. And in many ways they are, but um, how I'm structuring it is a little bit different because I believe if you have everything here as a beginner first, if you don't jump to windmills and flares and that stuff right away, then this is actually gonna help you a lot because you're gonna be, when you get there then, you're gonna be a lot more prepared because I always found as a beginner, the hardest part about learning kind of more of the trick and power move style things is that we didn't have that many precursors like your hand spams and like your tornadoes. And for instance, if you're gonna eventually do air flares or 90s or whatever, um, and like your different headstand poses and also like your tabletop switches and all these things that I'm kind of giving you here, as well as like tuck flares and, and, and stab bat taps because usually people are just like, this is the full movement. So the whole point of this for me is to give you guys, again, a base understanding of that full movement so that if you have this as your foundation first, then you go to intermediate, you're gonna be a lot more prepared to learn those things in intermediate too. Okay, if you like this video, please comment down below. Let me know if you'd like to have an intermediate and advanced checklist too. Shout outs to Weird and True, for he's the one that recommended I do this video. So, so, so this is his concept, I'm just creating it. Again, completely biased list, love it, hate it. Comment down below, let me know your thoughts. Much love, your boy, Manx Manita from Now and Ever Crew is out, see you guys tomorrow. Love is love. Love is love.